watching Big Lou Barbecue and the things I want to do. And what I wanted to do today is show off a new piece of cast iron that I got the next addition to my collection. But before I do that, I want to give a shout out to my buddy Luis, mi amigo Luis. It's Luis J. Cast Iron Cooking. All right, Luis J. I think it's a period after the J. Cast Iron Cooking. This dude knows his cast iron and he has developed a tremendous collection of cast iron. I've been watching him through most of the year 2021 and now into 2022 and he's almost right at a thousand subscribers. And um, I hope we can get him over that a thousand subscriber mark. I tell you what, he's uh, he's got an amazing cast iron collection of the new Bespoke collection and Lodge cast iron and he knows his cast iron history and he's a pretty good cook when he cooks with it too. So check out Luis J at uh, Cast Iron Cooking. So I want to give a shout out to my buddy. He supports my channel and I tell you what, he's really, really knowledgeable about his cast iron. So go check him out. All right, what did I buy? Well, I've wanted one of these for a long time. Um, you saw the title, five gallon Dutch oven. All right, first of all, yes, it's Chinese iron. They don't make uh, they don't make five gallon Dutch ovens in the United States. I think the biggest one Lodge made is a 14 quart at one time, but I don't think they make that one uh, anymore. I know I think the biggest they make is a 14 inch, which I think is about 10 quarts or maybe 12 quarts or something like that. Anyway, this one is 20 quarts. I call it a uh, five gallons because you know that's it but maybe liters or metric or something like that you know but a jerry can is 20 liters but we call it five gallons right so uh anyway it's a 20 quart i went into the place and i bought it a little funny story um i saw it and i thought about it i said man i've been wanting one of these for a while and they were out of them last november when i was going to buy one uh because of imports and all kind of issues like that and uh I looked at it and I said, oh, they got it. The price has gone up a little bit from uh, when I could have got one at another place last November if I had bought it before they sold it. And I um, thought about it and a few hours later, I went back and I, I picked it up. And I asked the lady, I said, I want the five gallon Dutch oven. She says, you mean the 20 quart? I said, no, she says, the big one? I said, yeah, she says, that's a 20 quart. I said, yeah, that's what I meant. Five gallons is 20 quarts, right? She says, I don't know. I said, yeah, you know. 20 divided by four, that's five, right? Anyway, hey, what brand is it? That's it, guys. It's heavy and it's big, all right? It's Cajun Classic. Here's the lid. I really like Cajun Classic cast iron, um, especially for pieces I can't get that are made in the United States. Cajun Classic, um, they're sold all over where I live. They might not be sold where you live, but here's a picture of where they're sold. Yeah, you see that? I can get them everywhere. And they only sell at like mom and pop type shops. Locally owned hardware stores, locally owned grocery stores and meat markets and places like that. And um, maybe even a few uh, knickknack stores or handicraft um, antique stores or something. Maybe they might sell them in. They might have somebody that deals with them. But they only deal with like locally owned businesses. No big box stores. You're not going to find these at a Lowe's or a Home Depot or a Walmart or Academy Sports and Outdoors or big chain stores like that. Cajun Classics only locally owned stuff. And um, so I'm, if I'm going to buy Chinese iron, I'm likely, uh, I'm pleased to support locally owned businesses that are selling it, you know. And um, there's no company that makes a Dutch oven that's this big. Now this is a, um, you know, it's a flat bottom Dutch oven. It's not a camp Dutch oven. It doesn't have legs on the bottom. I think Cajun Classic does have one that has legs on the bottom that's this big. And I know they have one that's this big that has a coal lip on the top. Maybe I could replace this with a coal lip if I ever wanted to roast turkeys or something like that in here. But um, I picked up the five gallon uh, jambalaya pot last year from a, uh, Cajun Classic when I went over there. Those people were so kind. If you didn't see that tour of the Cajun Classic cookware, I'll put a link. It'll be right there in the iCard and it'll be down below. All right. And um, check them out. Cajun Classic cast iron. I have a few pieces now. I've got their grill. I've got their oval crawfish pot. I think Luis J's picked up an oval crawfish pot uh, recently as well. But anyway, they make a point of saying that, you know, they got their Macware line, which is aluminum line. A lot of it's like an imitation of the old uh, Magnolite that's not made anymore. And uh, they've got the Cajun Classic, which is their cast iron line. And um, they've got some stoves and griddles and other stuff like that. And I have their little grill that I cook on often. And
And um, I tell you what, I like the fact that they only want to sell to locally owned businesses. So if I'm gonna buy the Chinese iron, that's uh, how I'm gonna buy it locally, not order it, not have it shipped. I'm just gonna go somewhere. Like I said, you can get to a place where they sell it because look, this is where they sell it. Here's that picture again. Yeah, you don't live there? You're welcome to move to the Gulf South, right here in Louisiana, Central Gulf South. We'll love to have you, you know. Anyway, uh, that's the tag. All right, so you can see um, the tag that was on, attached to the lid. You can pause the video and make any information you want to about what I have here. I hope so. I was covering it up. Look at that. I'll do it this way. How's that? Now you can see it all, all right? Anyway, five gallons, 20 quarts. I mean, look at the size of this. This is like a dang shield here, you know? This is a huge lid, man. And um, it does fit my five gallon jambalaya pot too. I've got an aluminum lid for that and the aluminum lid fits this one. Anyway, so why did I want it? I'm probably only use this two or three times a year. But when I want it, I want it. And uh, been cooking a lot more jambalaya and I cooked some for the uh, my, child, my son's uh, high school band last August for his band camp and I needed 10 gallons. I only had a five gallon pot and I could buy a 10 gallon jambalaya pot. But if I just bought one of these and did a thing of jambalaya in this and a thing in the round bottom jambalaya pot, round bottom does make a little better jambalaya. I could get 10 gallons. I could do 10, five gallons of chicken, five gallons of pork and sausage, five gallons of chicken and sausage or something like that, two different kinds. And um, I, I thought about getting their five gallon aluminum. They've got a, an aluminum jambalaya pot. Traditionally jambalaya is made in cast iron pots. They've got an aluminum one that's pretty cool too. But I figured the Dutch oven is more versatile. I could do a chicken and dumplings in this. I could do a Brunswick stew or any other kind of stew. I could do chili. And I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking jambalaya, it's got tomatoes in it. You're not supposed to do tomatoes in cast iron. No, jambalaya doesn't have tomatoes in it here in Louisiana. Some in New Orleans do that Creole style jambalaya with tomatoes in it for the tourists, okay? But most people in New Orleans don't even eat jambalaya with tomatoes in it, all right? In fact, at the Jambalaya Festival in Gonzales, they don't even allow jambalaya to be cooked with tomatoes in it. And, um, but outside of the state, they're familiar with all the big time chefs and Creole chefs from New Orleans and those are the recipes that get printed. And outside of Louisiana, they think tomatoes go in jambalaya. Kind of like outside of Texas, they think beans go in chili. I live 15 miles from Texas, so I'm a no beans and chili guy and I'm a no tomatoes and jambalaya guy. All right, anyway, um, jambalaya is traditionally made in cast iron pots and uh, I can make a lot of jambalaya with this. And with the other jambalaya pot, I can make a lot of jambalaya. I can make uh, all kinds of things in this and um, I can roast quite a bit. I realize that it's not a uh, camp lid and I may get a camp lid for it with a lip on it and that way I can put this on a trivet. I've got a trivet that would keep it up off of fire. And uh, even though it doesn't have legs with the trivet, I could cook over fire if I get the lid that has the uh, lip on it. And then I'd use this lid on my uh, five gallon cast iron jambalaya pot. Anyway, um, I'm gonna get this seasoned up and I'll take you along as I season it. I've got some buzzy wax and I think I'm gonna season the inside with buzzy wax and season the outside with grape oil, grape seed oil. All right, not grape oil, grape seed oil. All right, thanks for watching Big Lou Barbecue. If you wanna watch me on season it, stick around the video and if not, hey, thanks for watching this far. Check out Luis J. Cast Iron Cooking as well. And uh, Cajun Classic guys, I, I think a lot of their company, I know it's, um. Chinese iron, Chinese import iron, but um, they make a lot of things that you can't get that aren't made in the United States. And if you want one, if you want a five gallon, 20 quart cast iron Dutch oven, well, you're not gonna find one uh, made in the United States because Lodge is the only one that makes cast iron Dutch ovens in the United States and Lodge doesn't make one this big. So thanks for watching Big Lou Barbecue. Let's get this seasoned up. I'm gonna put it on the thing and we'll get it going. All right, that pot does fit uh, on my five gallon jambalaya pot stand from Cajun Classic, but not well, not like the round bottom kettle style um, jambalaya pots do. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this on my turkey fryer. At one time, this was a stainless steel turkey fryer. That was um, nearly two decades ago when this was a stainless steel turkey fryer. Since then, it's become a stained up turkey fryer. It has shown rust. I know it's supposed to be stainless, but you know, 
Anyway, it works, and uh, I use this for frying turkeys. You've seen this in my videos for frying turkeys. All right, but this pot fits on it really, really well. I took the pot inside since you last saw it, and I washed it with soap. The thing fits just, if I turn these ears to the corners, I can fit it down in my sink. And I, uh, just a touch of dish soap on this cooking surface. And um, the outside, I didn't put dish soap on. But um, I'm going to re-season it. You know, it comes seasoned, you can cook in it, but I like to put an extra coat of seasoning on it, especially since I'm gonna be storing it outside most of the time. Just don't have room to store a pot this big in my house. And, um, I think it's gonna go real well. Now I picked this Buzzy Wax Up, wax up at Cajun Classic uh, last um, last fall. I went there in November and um, picked up a skillet from them, an enameled skillet, and I got this Buzzy Wax while I was there. And I really like using this stuff. Cajun Classic also used to, or still does, have their own brand of um, paste cast iron seasoning. But on the outside of the pot, I'm just gonna use you know just grapeseed oil, all right? So, um, since this won't fit in my oven, I'm gonna have to do it this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it off of here. We'll light this up and I'm gonna do the lid first. Well, my apologies. I didn't have uh, the camera rolling when I was seasoning the lid. First, I had it with that side down and the handle side up and I put grapeseed oil on there and I let that burn in for a bit. Then I flipped it over and I put the buzzy wax there on the inside. And what you're watching now is uh, me letting it burn off. And I thought the camera was off, but the camera was off and I was actually doing the stuff. Anyway, I know what you're thinking. Hey, that lid's so big, it'd make a good kamal. You could put some fajitas on there, some tortillas on there, some onions, some peppers, even pancakes and cook breakfast on it, man. Yeah, I could cook on the inside of that lid. Anyway, sorry you didn't get to see me uh, season the lid, but it's the same process as the pot. And uh, I'll show you how I season the pot. All right, well, the lid uh, quit smoking and I put the um, pot on upside down. I'm gonna let it start getting hot. You can see Cajun Classic, made in China, Mamu, Louisiana. Uh, yeah, Cajun Classic imports this stuff, but you know, most uh, cast iron companies do nowadays. And if you want something that's unique, like a five gallon, 20 quart Dutch oven, it's gonna have to come from China. So if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna buy it from a mom and pop outlet. I'm not gonna order it online and have, you know, Jeff Bezos make money with it or something like that. I'm gonna uh, buy it from a locally owned business and I was proud to buy it from them. So all my Cajun classic cast iron, I do have some stuff from like an academy or something, outdoor gourmet and um, maybe a Sam's Club brand uh, cast iron thing or something. But pretty much all my cast iron is either Lodge or Cajun classic with a few other things, but you know, I'm happy to buy from Cajun Classic. I really am, because I like their dedication to uh, the mom and pop shop. And if you don't believe me, uh, just watch my video. I had it linked above earlier in the iCard and it's down below about when I toured it. We met Kimberly over there and she told us all about Cajun Classic and how they're uh, dedicated to um, locally owned businesses. And like I said, um, it's everywhere that I know of. You saw the map, I'll show you the map again. Yep, you see, and if you don't live near I mean, I live right in the middle of all those red dots, right? I can find Cajun Classic Local. But if you can't, you can move somewhere. All right, let's go ahead and get this done with some grapeseed oil the same way. If you stayed around in the video this long, hey, I really appreciate you watching. Uh, you must love me, or you must love cast iron, or you must love Cajun Classic, or you must love Dutch ovens, or you must love just cast iron seasoning, or whatever. And um, like I said, you don't have to season these, this new cast iron before you cook in it, you used to have to wipe, wipe the wax off of it and stuff. And in fact, my Cajun Classic uh, Oval Roaster, it was an old one when I bought it. It was new when I bought it, but it was old at stock, new old stock. And I had to get the wax off of it and re-season it because it, was, um, it wasn't one of these new styles that comes pre-seasoned. But I like to have it good and seasoned up anyway. And so it's coated with grapeseed oil I'm going to let that smoke off of there a little bit, and we'll turn it up and do the buzzy wax. All right. It's been going a little bit. Let's see if we can get it flipped over. Yes, indeed. Just like that. And let's get the buzzy wax coated all on the inside there. Start with the bottom. Now, Cajun Classic makes a uh, fry pot 
that goes in here or a, actually a perforated aluminum basket that you can put in here and you can use it for boiling if you wanted to boil some shrimp or something in here um boil just potatoes or something you could uh, do that and you pull it out and all your boiled vegetables or seafood or whatever is in that basket or you can use it for deep frying fill this sucker up with some oil and you can fry a bunch of fish and um french fries and all kind of stuff in here so they do have a basket that does fit this and uh, i'm gonna leave a link to cajunclassiccookware.com down below it's also called macware because macware is their aluminum line and um you can check it out but you're not going to be able to buy anything from there because that is primarily for the retailers and the retailers like i said are local mom and pop shops so um i like using it there are other brands of regional cast iron um there's carolina cooker and i don't know if they what their policy is on only using my, uh, mom and pop shops but carolina cookers obviously out of the carolina areas they have a 20 gallon um dutch oven uh, 20 gallon 20 quart rather dutch oven they uh there's bayou classic which is out of mississippi not associated with cajun classic they sell in big shops so academy and walmarts and the places like that the big store home depots and stuff they don't have that um thing like cajun classic does you know where they only use mom and pop shops uh tech sports the same way i think that's out of texas so you know there's carolina mississippi and you know, Cajun Classics, Louisiana, but I really, really respect their um, dedication to locally owned businesses. And you don't buy their stuff at um, corporate, corporate, big, big corporate places. So every time I buy this, I'm supporting a locally owned business. So might be Chinese iron, but I'm still proud to use Cajun Classic. I can't say enough about that. All right, so I got a coat of Buzzy Wax on the inside. I'm gonna let it smoke. I'm gonna go ahead and do another one. I won't make you watch it and uh, put the lid on it and let it go for a little bit and we're gonna season, have this thing seasoned up. All right, well, while you weren't looking, I put another coat of Buzzy Wax on it. I'm gonna set the lid on there. I'm gonna turn the fire up just a little bit. We get this thing really kind of hot and then I'm gonna turn the fire off. And once it cools down to the touch, I'll take you back and show you what it looks like if you wanna stick around that long. All right, well, while I wait on it to heat up a little bit more and bake this season on, I want to show you one reason I wanted it, because I've had this old turkey fryer cooker. I do fry turkeys with it. But I knew from the measurements that that would fit that thing like a glove. I mean, there's very little room in between that lip and this touch oven. So, been wanting one a long time. I'm glad I finally have it. And um, I was glad to purchase it from a local shop. So, well, it's had time to cool down from the seasoning process. And you can see that original factory coat had a little charcoal gray color, but we've got a nice black sheen on this now. And it looks good on the inside. It's kind of shiny right there. And you can kind of see, I might've had it off center a little bit where the propane was burning, but we got a good seasoning on the bottom too. And look at the sides, they look, they look gorgeous. I don't know if you can see that in the sunlight, but anyway, um, I feel a little better better about it being protected out here and I'm ready to use it and uh, maybe cook a pasta liar or something in it first. Well, the sun's starting to set, but you can tell where the burner was hitting the thing. It's still seasoned, but I'm gonna touch it up with a little bit more oil and rub it down with a chain nail and uh, hit it with a little bit more oil and low pressure on that thing. I probably need to invest in one of those low pressure banjo burners. It'll heat a little more evenly on the bottom of this big old pot. But anyway, um, no big damage done to it, and uh, it's just a little, or it's a little hotter right there, but it's still seasoned well. But I'm gonna go ahead and put another coat of the grapeseed oil on that and heat it up slow, and then fix this inside to it. You can see it's right there. It kind of looks like rust, but I'm gonna hit that with Buzzy Wax. And um, just redo it a little bit, uh, lower pressure, a little bit less heat, and then, uh, it's gonna be a fine pot. All right, well, evening has set in and this is cooled off. I did hit it with the chain mail and then re-oiled it. And oh yeah, that, you can see the reflection of the light, but that looks nice. All right, I am gonna to have to get one of those banjo burners. Let's take a look at the underside. I went low pressure with it and not too spicy. Yeah, that ain't too bad. That's, Got some marks where it was sitting on those rails and stuff, but 
That's good. And you know, it started out season. So, hey, I'm going to be happy with this thing. I am going to get one of those banjo burners to cook on it more, but I can cook on it with this if I just watch the pressure. And uh, I'm going to be happy with this 20 quart, five gallon. Y'all, I got big hands, extra large gloves. That's the size of this thing. I mean, extra large gloves, you know? I have a size 14 shoe. I have a size 14 shoe. All right. There you go. There's where my heel is. That's how big this thing is.